Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, I am going to demonstrate how to use the XPath expression in Power Automate to make it easy to parse HTML tables in either web pages or emails or any HTML source. So for my example, I am going to use this page from my blog, which is a guide how to upgrade an old piece of Dell hardware. Within this page, there is a HTML table here of compatible CPUs, and I'm going to convert that to JSON, a JSON array in Power Automate using XPath. So for the first action, I'm going to use the HTTP request just to get us the HTML. Oops. So that's going to be a GET request, and this is the URL. Because the XPath expression can be a little bit fussy about what it parses, it needs to have proper closing tags, opening and closing tags, and a root element. I don't want everything from this page. So I'm just going to view the source of this and put it into Notepad to see what I want to grab. So I'm going to look for that table tag, which it starts here. So go back to my flow. I'm going to do a compose action and call it table start. So I'm going to use an expression. I'm going to say substring and the HTTP body. And the start index is going to be, so I'm going to use index of here, HTTP body, and I'm going to search for, oops, I'm going to search for um, table like that. Let's just have a look at the HTML. I'll search for table. And I'm not going to specify the third parameter, so it will just go until the end of the HTML. And then I'm going to do another compose action. I'll just call this one table. And here I'm going to do substring table start, start at zero. And I'm going to end at index of the output table start. And I'm going to look for forward slash table. In fact, I might not. Let's find the end of this. If I end it there, I'll lose that table. And I can see that it's got this other tag figure straight after it. So I'll actually end on that. So let's OK that. So I'm just going to test that to make sure that we've got a valid table. So here's our opening table tag and there is our closing table tag. So to make this a little bit easier to view, I'm just going to beautify that so that we can see it easily. So I'm using this website XPather. So if I paste this table into here, this site is really good. So I can hold down the control key. I can click on any, any element and it will write the XPath expression for me. Now, that will bring us specifically that cell that I've selected there, but what I actually want is just the TRs. So I am going to change this to say slash slash TR, and that will bring us an array of all of these, every entry. So I'm going to start with that. So let's go back now to Power Automate. We will need to do two act XPath expressions for what we want. So now, I think what I'll do actually, just to break it down a little bit more, show you how it works, is I'm just going to do XML, and then the table outputs. And 
and that will convert that to XML. And then I'm going to do another compose. I'm going to call this table rows. So now I'm going to say XPath, XML table, and my XPath is going to be slash slash TR. By the way, that slash slash TR just means select every TR regardless of where it is. If it was just slash TR, I wouldn't get anything. I could do slash table slash T body slash TR and it would give me the same thing. Or I could just do slash slash TR. So let's just give that a quick test. And what we should get back from this is some unreadable base64, and that's correct. This is still in XML format, which Power Automate understands. Just so we can see it, I'm not going to use it, but so we can see what's in there. Just gotta add a select operation. Use table rows as the input. And then I will use an expression, I'll say item. I'll say item dollar content and then I'll do base 64 to string now what we should get in here for every element of that array is a TR tag So the output here you can see is the, the entire contents of each TR. So I don't want the first row because the first row, if we go back to the website, is these headers. So I'm going to skip those out, but I do want each individual TD. So if we go back to XPath now, our HTML now, each element of it, looks like just that. So now what I want to do is say forward slash forward slash TD and actually I only want the text. So I just want the text elements within there. And the reason that that didn't work is because there is a strong tag there. So I can do star forward slash text or I can just say slash slash text. So that should work. Let's try it out. Go back to here. And now I'm going to do another select. I'm going to get rid of that previous select in a minute. So the output is table rows. But what I actually want to do is skip that first record. So I'm going to say skip table rows one. And that's just going to give us the information back that we want. And now I can begin to create the map. So the first column is CPU. So I can just type CPU in here. And then the expression is going to be XPath item. Um, and then it's that that expression forward slash forward slash td and then the text and because it's going to bring back an array each element each td will be one element of that array so here it's numbered from 1 to 8 in power automate it will be numbered from 0 to 7 so for that CPU, I want element zero. So I'm going to go like that. And then the next is megahertz. And then max megahertz. I'll just do one more row and then cause. <clears throat> So I'm just going to take this XPath expression 
and duplicate it, but change the value to one. Two. Three. I'm going to rename this CPU CPU JSON. Don't need that anymore. So let's try it and see if it works. Yeah, there we go. So here's our new array of CPUs straight from a HTML table. Let's just check it to the end. The last one is a Celeron G530. Celeron G530, 2400. There we are. And that is all there is to it. The XPath expression I don't really see it used an awful lot in Power Automate, but it is super powerful. You can use it to, for example, if I wanted to get the title from this HTML page or some other text or select individual elements that I wanted to grab the value from, you can use it for that. And by using a tool like XPather, it becomes much easier to do. So if you are trying to convert a HTML table to a JSON with Power Automate, this might be an easier method to use. I've done another video on this, which has been quite popular, that shows you how to do it using split expressions. But this just feels a bit more efficient and easier to understand. And once you get your head around the XPath expression and syntax, I think you'll find it to be quite powerful. So give it a go, see how you get on. If you get stuck, let me know in the comments. Um, Otherwise, see you soon for another video. Cheers. Bye-bye.